Hello and welcome to Greensboro's J. Douglas Galleon Depot. Today we are riding on Amtrak's Carolinian in business class from here up to New York City. We've got a 12 hour ride ahead of us, so let's get started. Greensboro's Galleon Depot was built in 1927 as the Greensboro Southern Railway Depot. Southern Railway operated trains in and out of Greensboro until 1979, with renovations taking place in the early 2000s ahead of its reopening on October 1st of 2005. The station now serves Amtrak's Crescent and Carolinian long distance routes and the North Carolina state sponsored Piedmont service. As I mentioned in our previous ride out of Greensboro, the station is absolutely gorgeous. From the high ceiling and arched windows to the incredible Southern Railway map, the station is a masterpiece. If you're ever traveling through Greensboro, take a moment to just stop and appreciate this amazing station. As much as I'd love to hang around, we have a train to catch. The departure board shows that we're still set for an on-time departure of 8.24am. About 15 minutes before Train 80's scheduled arrival, the first boarding announcement is made and we can head out to Platform 2. Greensboro has two platforms. Platform 1 serves Amtrak's Crescent service, which heads north after its stop here, while Platform 2 serves the local Piedmont and Long Distance Carolinian services, which continue east. Before the Carolinian pulls in, let's take a look at our route up to New York City. Our ride on the Carolinian begins in the same manner as the Piedmont, heading east through Burlington and Durham before a pit stop in Raleigh, but that's where the similarities end. The Carolinian continues southeast, meeting up with the Silver Meteor and Palmetto tracks through Selma. Heading north from there, we pass Rocky Mount and Halifax ahead of our crossing into Virginia. Our train continues north through Petersburg, Richmond, and Fredericksburg, pulling into Washington, D.C. for our only long stop of the day. Washington, D.C. is also the point where we change over from diesel to electric, replacing our P-42DC with the electric power of the ACS-64. Night falls ahead of our stop in Philadelphia, traversing the rest of the route in darkness before arriving at New York's Penn Station around 8.30 p.m. We'll cover a total of 613 miles on our ride today, with a travel time of 12 hours and 11 minutes. A pair of headlights appear in the distance, and Amtrak Carolinian No. 80 pulls in, led by P-42DC No. 10. The brakes squeal as our train comes to a stop and we can climb aboard. As with most Amtrak trains, business class is located at the rear of our train, and after checking in with our attendant, we can get seated for our 12-hour odyssey up to NYC. Business class offers passengers a seat selection when booking their tickets. This normally is great, but seeing as I upgraded last minute, I was stuck with an aisle seat for the beginning of our ride. No worries though, as I was getting hungry, so we can head forward to the cafe car to grab some breakfast. The cafe car is fairly empty this early in the morning, which is great, as I could get some work done while enjoying the ride. Amtrak's Amfleet 1 cafe cars include two sections of tables for dining passengers, with eight tables per side for a total of 16. One of the great amenities for business class passengers, especially on longer rides, is complimentary beverages. This extends to Amtrak's entire selection of non-alcoholic options, with alcohol being a paid extra. For breakfast this morning, I chose a lemon pound cake and a can of cold brew coffee, both of which are new options added with Amtrak's revamped cafe menu. We cruise through Burlington and Durham, our train pulling into Raleigh for our first longer stop of the day. Raleigh is not scheduled as a long stop by any means, but due to some technical issues, we were stuck for around 15 minutes. With our unscheduled smoke stop complete, our train carried on into uncharted territory.
Track speeds on most routes across the network peak somewhere in the 70 to 80 range. The segment between Raleigh and Selma caps out at 70, but that's nowhere near the fastest we'll see today. Speaking of, Selma is the next stop en route to New York. Selma is the turning point to head north towards Virginia, our train wrapping around the tightly curved platform between the east and northbound tracks. From back here, we get a great view of our locomotive at the front, with its rake of Amfleet 1 coaches in tow. Selma Station also has this beautiful caboose on display. I can't tell which railway it belonged to, so if you know more about it, do let me know in the comments below. Stop complete, Locomotive 10 powers up, hauling us out of Selma and on towards Virginia. Returning to our seat, we can have a look at the business class seating on board. We're seated today in seat 1A, a window seat at the very front of the coach. Because this is the first row, we have no seat in front of us and thus as much legroom as we can get. Stretching out, my feet just barely reach the wall in front, which is more than enough to stay comfortable on our long ride. Sitting here does mean that we don't have a tray table or seat back pocket, but it's a small price to pay for this much space. Above the seats in each row are the usual lights, with two outlets found just below the window. Blinds are located along the length of the train to help block out any unwanted sunlight. The one for this first window has been bound by a zip tie, presumably to keep it out of the way, but it leaves the forward portion of the window entirely open. Seat adjustments are made via the button on the side of each armrest, which reclines the seat another 25 degrees. Above each side of the train are luggage racks, which can hold even the largest of suitcases. If verticality is an issue, then secondary luggage racks can be found at the front of the car. And if you don't want to carry your bags at all, then there is a third option. Tagged onto the rear of our train is a luggage car. Checked baggage is not an uncommon sight on most long-distance Amtrak trains, and the Carolinian is no exception. Passengers are allowed two free checked bags in addition to two carry-ons, so there's never any need to worry about exceeding the limit. While we're enjoying the ride, why not hit that subscribe button? It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. If you want to go the extra mile with your support, then feel free to check out the channel's Patreon or become a channel member. Patrons and members get their names in the video, access to exclusive weekly posts, and even the opportunity to vote on future videos. If those perks pique your interest, then click the links in the top right or in the description below to learn more. The miles come and go as we make our way north, stopping at Wilson and Rocky Mount along the way. Departing north from Rocky Mount, keep an eye out for this gorgeous Atlantic coastline and CSX mural. Painted on the side of the Carolinas Gateway Partnership Building, the mural is a nod to the two railways that helped build Rocky Mount, one of which still runs today. Lunchtime came as we rode towards the Virginia border. For lunch today, I opted for the mac and cheese, a bag of sea salt chips, another cold brew, and a bottle of water. It certainly wasn't the healthiest selection out there, but it was definitely filling. Plus, the cold brew is quite good, helped in part by it being complimentary. We crossed over into our second state of the day, flying through Virginia at 80 miles an hour. Petersburg is our first station in Virginia, followed by Richmond 40 minutes later. On approach to Richmond, we cross over the James River, which gives us a much-needed break in the foliage lining the tracks. Richmond is also where we cross paths with the late-running Silver Star. On the front of the star is Federal Railroad Administration No. 221, an automatic track inspection car painted in that classic Pennsylvania Railroad Tuscan Red. The one real disadvantage to sitting in this first row is the proximity to the bathrooms. 
I personally don't mind, but it can be uncomfortable to some passengers. But while we're on the subject, let's see what they have to offer. Amtrak's Amfleet One coaches include two bathrooms, a regular and an accessible facility. The accessible bathroom on our train was quite clean, with no real blemishes to speak of, a great start so far. The sink works well with plenty of soap, paper towels, and toilet paper. The 120-volt outlet appears to be in good condition, with a mirror and toilet following suit. Honestly, it's a step up from what I'm used to from Amtrak facilities, and I have to hand it to our conductors for coming through and refreshing the bathrooms fairly frequently. Most of Amtrak's single-level coaches now offer free Wi-Fi. Connecting to the network is easy, and the speeds are serviceable, but not great. At around 2.1 megabits per second, it's enough to browse the web and maybe do a bit of streaming, but the network can be spotty at times, so no guarantees your connection will hold. Fredericksburg is up next. Fredericksburg is also the first stop shared by a commuter rail service, with VRE's Fredericksburg line making the run down from DC. Continuing north, the tracks run parallel to the Potomac River, although we're on the wrong side of the train to truly appreciate it. The Washington Monument pokes up over the treetops as we cross the Potomac, the tracks giving us an amazing view of the Capitol down Capitol Street. Emerging from the tunnels beneath DC, our train comes to a stop for our only official smoke stop of the day. DC is also where the coolest part of the journey happens, the engine swap. Amtrak trains running on the Northeast Corridor are operated by electric motive power. This means we must bid farewell to our P-42DC in favor of not one, but two Siemens ACS-64s. The loco swap begins with our two ACS-64s pulling out in front of our train, having been positioned a few tracks over ahead of our arrival. A crew then uncouples our P-42DC, which pulls forward to finalize the disconnect. Of course, DC is no slouch when it comes to railway action. While our crew works to disconnect our P-42, the Capital Limited backs in ahead of its departure later that evening, while the southbound Acela pulls onto one of the high-level platforms at the end of the line. Brake lines now disconnected, Locomotive 10 pulls away from the Carolinian, leaving our train as a powerless rake of coaches for the time being. With Locomotive 10 now clear of the track, ACS 64s number 621 and 615 pull in to take over. The two ACS-64s creep up to the Carolinian, coupling on with a satisfying clunk.
With our train now under electric power, we can climb back aboard to continue our ride up to NYC. Heading out of DC, we quickly pick up speed, reaching 100 miles an hour, exiting the I-495 loop. While we've still got some daylight left, let's take a look at some stats about our train. Taking us up to New York City today is Amtrak Carolinian number 80. Leading us through to DC was GE Genesis P42DC number 10, with ACS 64s number 621 and 615 taking over to New York City. Our P42DC was powered by a GE V16 engine, producing 4,200 horsepower. P42DCs are rated for a top speed of 110 miles per hour, but track speeds on the Carolinian limit trains to a maximum of 80 miles an hour. Our ACS 64s are powered by Siemens three-phase AC traction motors, producing a continuous output of 6,700 horsepower. ACS 64s have a boost mode, which ups the total output to 8,600 horsepower or 6,400 kilowatts over shorter intervals. With two locomotives, our train outputs a whopping 13,400 continuous combined horsepower, with the option to boost to a ridiculous 17,200 horsepower when needed. Amtrak's Carolinian operates on the 704-mile line between New York and Charlotte, North Carolina. Journey times between the two termini sit at around 13 hours and 31 minutes for northbound trains and 13 hours and 50 minutes for southbound trains. This leaves the Carolinian with an average speed of 52.1 and 50.8 miles per hour for north and southbound trains respectively. Baltimore is our next stop on the corridor, our train picking up a few passengers before carrying on. Sunset comes on the outskirts of Baltimore, the sun illuminating the sky with a gorgeous suite of oranges, pinks, and blues. As darkness came over the land, I figured it was time for dinner. I decided on something light instead of a full meal, knowing I would eat again when we got to New York. For this interim dinner, I chose the veggie tamale and a chocolate chip cookie, plus a San Pellegrino to drink. If you haven't had the cookie, it is, as the packaging says, amazing, a perfect medley between cookie and chocolate chunks. Philly is next up, our train stopping a bit longer than expected due to some traffic ahead. Leaving Philadelphia, we pass by Amtrak's Race Street Yard, where, under the lights, we can spot not one, not two, not three, but four Avalia Liberty train sets. Amtrak has since received their fifth from Alstom, with more on the way ahead of passenger service later this year. Our arrival in NJT territory marks the beginning of the end for our journey, our stop in Newark the penultimate ahead of Penn Station and Moynihan Train Hall. Out under the lights beside Portal Bridge, construction is underway on the new Portal Bridge. The project will replace the 113-year-old railway bridge, which opened back in 1910. This new bridge is a huge step forward for travel in the Northeast, and combined with new tunnels beneath the Hudson River will hopefully double the number of hourly trains between New York and New Jersey. Dipping down below the Hudson River, our train pulls into New York Penn Station, a full 12 hours after our journey began. With one last look at our business class coach, we can step off the Carolinian and out into New York City, where we'll bring today's video to a close. Next week, we'll be back in Texas for a ride on the Texas Eagle from Fort Worth to Austin.
If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my patrons and channel members. I really cannot thank y'all enough for your incredible support. If you too want your name in the video or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.